OK, hello, everybody. Today is the 21st of December 2022, and we're going to show how to install X3D Edit authoring tool and then how to update it. My name is Don Brutzman at the Naval Postgraduate School. And I'm Terry Norbrod, and happy holidays, everyone. Yeah, so Terry, let me lead off by just saying thank you for all the great work you've done getting X3D Edit back up on its feet, and we're making uh, tremendous strides now. So let's let's share a screen here and walk the walk a little bit. Okay, so I've got on the screen the X3D Edit homepage, and when you go through this, you can see a lot of stuff. We've got uh, actually upwards of 300 downloads and that doesn't count all the updates going on automatic updates but it's basically a NetBeans tool we're using NetBeans which is the biggest source line of code project at Apache and it's a Java based editor that we can configure and add all sorts of stuff in it so on the x 3 Edit homepage, there's tons and tons and tons of detail because every time we add some new little thing, we document it on there. But we're going to go ahead today and just walk through how to download it, install it, and run it. So here we are on the URL for the x 3 d download. It's on SourceForge, sourceforge.net, projects, x 3 d files, and here we go. So let's download it. 193 megabytes. Yeah, it's pretty big. That takes a while. While we're doing that, while it's coming down, I'm going to show you that you will also need Java installed. And we talk about that right here on the README. And we're recommending for most people that use the Oracle JDK, that's the most widely used one. It's not fully open source, but it is free for personal development study use. And it sets up all your class path and registry settings, at least on Windows. There's an alternate way to do it with Open JDK as well. We're happy to help people if the instructions don't help with that. But let's see what happened here. It looks like the download is almost done. There's the spinning clock. And. OK, final step. So what I'm going to do is simply open this zip and extract it in a convenient place. You can extract it anywhere. You should be able to do this. As a plain old user, you don't have to be a local administrator on your machine. So I'm opening the zip now. Click and there it is. And you know what, Terry, I think I skipped an important step. Go back to the download directory. At least on Windows, you have to make sure that this thing is unblocked. So I just right clicked on the properties and sure enough for that zip file it looked like it was letting me look at it but it said hey wait a minute it came from another computer it might be unsafe so you want to unblock it apply that okay that's a one-time deal for windows downloads when you pull down a zip okay now what this zip includes is all the things that java needs to run this module suite so let's see, I'm going to extract everything. I'm going to put it, as I say, in a convenient directory. So let's find that. Okay, and it's an X3D edit module suite. I'll have it show me the results when done. Here comes Kaboom. Hopefully many of you have Java installed already either the Oracle or the OpenJDK. And so that's a pretty straightforward step. We're not gonna belabor that on this video, but 
if the directions following that download and install are difficult, then we're always happy to help any individual who, who wants some help. Frankly, we find that's really productive because the one thing you don't see when you're developing is <laughs> what everybody else sees when they're using. So we often learn things when we provide assistance. We, we discover un, undetected bugs. We learn how to fix them. Okay, you can see this happy eye candy they give us is not linear, but it just really sped up at the end. So there it goes. And now here it is where it's, I installed it. Now, when you read the README, notice it says right at the bottom of the screen here, what you're looking for. I'm on Windows, so I'm giving the Windows install directions. So I'm going into the bin directory and looking for X3D module suite 64. I'm on a 64 bit machine. Now you can just click it right here, but I find it's a good time to create a shortcut. And let's name it a little less cryptically. And we'll call it X3D edit. Or dot O. Uh, named in honor of the X3D 4.0 specification. And I'll put that on my desktop later. Let's just click on it now and see what we get. Hey, look at that, it's coming up. That splash screen means you've installed correctly and it's now loading. And so we are very careful not to put any commercial software anywhere inside this code base so that it's 100% open source to make sure it's repeatable so others can say, how does X3D work? How do I use it with many other things? This tool tells you how. Now here's, here's one little bit of clumsiness. We'd like this to look better. We're still working on it. So when you first open this up, we suggest you go to the window menu this menu here and select files and drag this over. Now this can be a little twitchy. Notice the orange box shows you where it's going to land. I let go of it and I've just dragged that files tab here. And if you put the navigator tab to the left, we think that's a little easier to use. And then boom, presto, you are now configured and ready to go. And so Let's open a module. The, here's two models right here. Uh, let's open the first one. We've built in a Hello World, pretty popular model. And our, if you look up Hello World, there's hundreds of Hello World programs. It's usually considered the simplest program in any programming language. Well, our whole Hello World shows the world. <laughs> There it is, tucked in the corner on my machine here. We have lots of functionality. We can go full screen. We can say, what's the information for this file? And on the left, it's helping me navigate. I can also work on the left in that navigation tool and go, well, are there any images in here? Let's see, we've got a shape with a sphere. Click on the sphere. Oh, there it appears on the right. And then I go off to the right and say, where is the texture for that world? There it is right there. Clicks back and forth. If we want to drill down into the plain old XML that's in here, well, first we can just inspect it. That's one of the big benefits of X3D. You can edit it by hand. It looks a lot like HTML does intentionally and see how it works. Let's say, well, let's look more at that image texture. So I'm going to edit it and I can get there through the menus. Say, oh, okay, here's, here's the image. Let's, let's open that image, see what it looks like. 
OK, it's a cloudless Earth, and that's a plain old image that's been wrapped around a sphere to get us the thing that we want. We can look at some other nodes. Do you see any of your favorite nodes in here, Terry? All those transforms can be fun sometimes. OK, let's look at this transform right here. What does that mean? Well, instead of using the menu to open it, I'm going to go up here. Oh, this little rounded rectangle with a pen sticking in it, that's the edit button. That's the hot key that makes it a little quicker. We go, oh, OK, so translation 0 to negative 2, 0 gives our position x, y, z in meters in the normal coordinate system. If we wanted to, we could shift the scaling on it, but meters is good. If we want to see more help, we can click on the help button and it not only pulls up the tool tips, but it'll drop right down into the online link for transform. And now you have immense detail of what a transform is about. If that summary information isn't enough, then just click on the word transform, click through the index, and now we're right smack dab in the middle of the X3D4 draft international spec will edit taking the final national body at it next week 14 let's see 12 of 14 nations all voted yes and we had no no votes so tons of tons of stuff in here we've also instrumented extra d so whenever you see a report button you can click on that and you should get an email pop up that said, hey, Brutzman, what, what the heck's going on? And you can copy and paste your report. You can type in what you want, screenshot, whatever. And away you go. Looks like my mailer's waking up here. Uh, no, I don't want to log in for this. So you can uh, use your mailer. Many other features so let's accept that okay so i think we've shown that it's installed let's look at one or two other features and then we'll do an update in the x3d edit menu we've collected all the different things going on and here's our workflow this is the typical thing you edit it you view it you edit you view it you run quality assurance you edit it you view it you do canonicalizations settles out the white space so it looks pretty and then uh, we can export it as pretty print documentation so either here from the menu or on the workflow the identical workflow buttons right here i'll click on the html5 and i'll say oh you want documentation huh and i say yes please Probably don't need that in the editor, but I will load it in the browser. And let's see what we get here. There it is. So there is the exact same model, but styled into HTML as documentation. Anytime we had a URL in there, it's linked. And sure enough, there's that same image. And sure enough, there are two other versions of that same image case uh, there was a problem with the first you have some backup okay so other menu items here won't go in every one but you can launch it in different browsers you can turn it into json or python or even turtle we have an extra d tidy to help clean things up if you have some common errors right now let's look at the update so we go to tools this time we're not in the extra d edit menu i guess we should check it let's look at this about extra d edit we see sure enough this build we pulled down was created on the 16th of december but today is the 21st of december so if we go over to tools plugins Look at that, it already found that, hey, there is a new update available. Now, if you want that to be super peppy and keep track, with, track of us, 
then go into settings. Extra D update center should be there. And change this from every week. The default I, I like to have it at every startup, so you always know that you got the latest greatest. So again, window, excuse me, tools. Plugins. Updates check for updates. Yep, there's an update, so I'll click. Do you want this update? I'll say why sure. I accept the open source licenses. Update. Here it is pulling down. I think we're up around 67 or 70 megabytes on the updates. Do I want to save my changes? Sure, why not? So that was NetBeans, the harness, the framework this runs in being well behaved for us. We see a splash screen revealing the update going on. So really you're getting a full-fledged NetBeans out of this with X3D Edit integrated in. Okay, and we are still updating the application zip that I just pulled down a minute ago. We intentionally set it so the default zip is a little bit older than the update, just so we could see this working. Okay. Time to play theme music from Will It Work or Will It Not? Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, I guess it worked. And here it is waking up. And if the wind's blowing in the right direction, we might even get the file we had before pop up. If not, we can just reopen it. OK, so that is the install. And that is the update of the install. And there is the new file. Oh, and there's the one I modified, looked at just a minute ago. New, Hello world example number four. Okay, let's show one more thing today. We're still on a Windows machine, but you can also download and install it in NetBeans itself. So if you don't want just especially application, if you're a Java developer or you like X NetBeans for other reasons, well, here it is. I have my NetBeans on this machine configured with the 16 December version. So you go, oh, okay, well, let's check. Let's check for an update. Plug in. It finds it right away because I have my settings set to every startup. Update. Why, sure, let's update. And yes, I do accept the certificate of security because I trust this install in the first place, and then I trust this install to update itself. There's the download finished. It's restarting. Again, we're not in the zip that we started with, but we're, we're in the updated, updating the version of NetBeans I had where this was also installed. And gee whiz, they look the same because that's how we did it. So either it's a standalone application, which you're welcome to use, or as part of your workflow in NetBeans, which you might already be doing. Okay, so again, we need that. We should add a hotkey somewhere, Terry, with that theme music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, see if this comes up in the pregnant pause. Okay, come on here. Nothing like watching a slider bar. Kind of like a watch pot that never boils. Let me check my script, make sure we covered everything for today. Yeah, I think so. Terry, while we're hanging on the doorstep here, this is a pretty darn old machine I'm on. It's maybe eight years old, but it's a great second check, even if it's a little slow. 
Terry, I believe you're going to be able to do an install video for Mac. Is that correct? Sure. Well, did you see anything that's grossly different here or just maybe a little file selection magic? What, how much different do you think your video will be? Uh, there'll be some upfront security things to work through. Punching through those issues in a in a different place, a different frame, but all in all, pretty much the same process with the uh, zip installer. Okay, great. So here it is, pondering the final install. Hey, do I want to check? Yes, I want to check. So it's making sure it's up to date. It just came back. With the example I had before, as you can see from the title bar, we're not in the X3D edit build. We're in Nat Apache NetBeans, and we're just integrated into however else that tool might work. If we, this is awake enough to proceed, go to the menu. We'll see, oh, yeah, tons of good stuff. We will check the X3D edit information. Still getting all of its internal updates in order. And we'll confirm that date. There it is about X3D edit. And sure enough, that's the update from today. OK, so there you have it. What we saw today was. You can install and update X3D Edit as a standalone application. You can install and update the very same X3D Edit as a plugin module inside of NetBeans. It works. We're doing updates once or twice a week as our current pace. And just to make it easy, we'll add a few more videos for Terry on Mac and another gentleman on Linux. And then we'll keep going with the videos as well as the updates each week. I think that's it. How'd we do, Terry? Did we answer the mail? You get a lot of these bug reports too. Yes, sir. I think we did. Okay, thanks. That'll do it for today. Have fun with X3D.